Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello, and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. Thanks for joining us. You know, I just want to kick things off with a happy birthday to yeah. Darlene. Oh, thanks. Yes, indeed. And it's, it's, it's particularly time, timely because we got a little award. And, um, you know, Darlene, you are our fearless leader on this show. Mm -hmm. You know, this, you were the, the founding. You pushed, you got, <laughs> you, us, the you show got this started. So, congratulations. We're, we're appreciative of the, you know, good feedback we're getting about the show. And thanks for talking us into doing this. Yeah, cheers, yeah. Girl. Cheers, girl. Happy birthday. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. It was fun being here for the annual meeting the other night. And um, I, I think the neat was um, Mary McLeod getting recognized for 23 years of. Um, being part of eight, not just HCAM, but before HCAM was Hop TV. Right, and so it was right. 23 years of actually doing, you know, the senior TV show she's done, di different like news segments that she's done all over the place. So right. that was kind of nice. So and she, yeah. she got like a lifetime achievement award here. Yeah, she's well awesome. Deserved. Well Absolutely. Deserved. And other other shows were, were recognized as well. Uh, uh, I Physicians think Physician Focus. Focus. Was, and, um, and the um, Hoppington Middle School. Absolutely. Yeah. So there are a lot of good shows, a lot of good programming. HCAM is awesome and supports us well. Oh, the, it, um, they showed like a, a program has expanded. I think it was over 10% a month. Wow. Of, hours. wow. It's of unique hours. It's like over 44, 45 unique hours a month of just original programming going out. Well, and, and what's also interesting is, going back to Mary McLeod, how the media um, has changed. And it's not just TV. It's right. YouTube. Um, it's a website. It's a Facebook. And you can get access to the programming from all those all vehicles Mary, as well. Yeah. Well, it was kind of funny because when it was Mary, you know, Mary McLeod and doing, you know, her senior focus show and things like that. Um, the only other thing that you were always drawn to on Hop TV was the kids jumping on it. <laughs> And, I mean, and, uh, My and, uh, kids remember and that they awesome. loved watching the backyard <laughs> trampoline show. George would be in that baby swing, and I'd throw that show on. Just watch the kids <laughs> on the trampoline. You know, and he'd go to nap to kids right. trampoline and trampoline, and I could work in the other room. I find that H cam the music that you choose. There's, there was, you know, this quiet. Even when you're just kind of showing the powerpoints of what's coming on, there's. The different kind of music, it lulls you in. I find myself sort of being <laughs> calmed by it. I don't know, the different type, it's fun. You guys are awesome. Yeah, so. So, ah, the, the calm before the storm. It's like, you know, well, after yeah. Halloween, what's been happening? But we had, before Halloween, oh, yeah. re there were two really cool events. And um, let's go back uh, a little Since over we were a week here ago, last, yeah. which was the event at the Unim Unibank. I actually want to go back even farther. It was Ooh, the, okay. the event we did the week before that, that Unibank helped sponsor with the chamber that we played a role in, and that was, we had the first ever business expo. That's right. Kind right. of highlighting, and you know, some of the unique businesses, in, and a lot of them women-owned yes. in town. Um, so the, this um, was the Chinese HCA. medicine one, which, yeah. uh, what, what was that called? Root and Branch. Root and, and Branch. And I X. actually have done a few. I've never done acupuncture um, before. And it's like, did you do it? Yeah. Oh, good. I had my second appointment. Awesome. Working on my elbow and my, I have tennis elbow rotator. I'm old. No. <laughs> the rotator cuff. <laughs> Active. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah. So and they H were there. And HKM was there. And yeah. they had actually a video camera. And I think they actually are picking up a cooking show out of right. it and stuff like yeah. that. So it's kind of a neat thing. Well, and um, business, the craft brewery guy at Waterfront. Oh, Yes. Was there talking Star, a bit yes, about Starline Brewer what's been Ted planning? And so um, that's Lions, exciting. Lions Club had a right. booth. Um, uh, there was Bee's Knees. Oh, yeah, which yeah. is also a local woman. Right. And, local woman, and it was, really cool. That's um, great. I miss. And you know what's really funny with her was that you know when she said her name and I was like looking at her and I'm like, did you marry someone from Ashland? She's mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, I married Kevin Maloney. I'm like. I used to play with his younger brother, and well, so you guys and grew up together. And my daughter played uh, sports together back in the day, so it was kind of fun to reconnect with people. Absolutely, that so was the a great Expo, event. The last Front Street concert for the season. All right. Um, well, well, that that was fun. Let's pause. The people that may not know about Front Street concert because we, I didn't before, you know, recently. So this beautiful, you know, setting at a home of a resident, um, quiet. Uh, they have a beautiful barn, and you know, occasionally bring in you know, folk artists and, and, you know, other types of music, local, performance, local. critically acclaimed, yes. but not well known. And they do it in support of. It's like of, a private concert, and lovely. It is essentially like, uh, like from the 
porch concerts, you know, right. it's, a, it's essentially a private party, but because of overflow reasons, you must RSVP. Um, and you bring your own stuff, but they share the music and they ask for a donation. Beautiful the setting. It's so Food. fantastic. Absolutely. You can Front Street Concerts, Google it and, and you'll, you'll find yeah. out more. I, I mean, one of the things they really, you know, um, Binky and Jerry really want to start sharing and seeing if this can actually grow, and I think maybe this format can help it, is that they brought something that we should have was was very we was very big in the South for many many years. Yeah. Front porch concerts, and they would be regional musicians and stuff like that. Um, and then they became very they're they're very popular in Somerville. Mm. Yeah. So the um, idea was they wanted to still promote local live music, bring it locally. So most of these artists are actually coming from Cambridge, Somerville. Yeah. They travel nationally. Mm -hmm. And so she would love to see some other homes in our community start doing these. She would help with the artists. She would help do that. And so the idea of spreading, the whole thing is a spread having live local music. Mm -hmm. They don't make money off of this. Mm -mm. They're really promoting the artists and sharing their love of music. There, so is, a, there is a ticket price to, to enter, but that goes fully straight to the it's artist. A donation, it's a donation, yeah. essentially. Yeah. And the hosts provide the food. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. But so, yeah, what else? So, what, there so was, then we was had awesome the um, Unibank sponsored, and it was an RHH exclusive with, um, we got a preview and a speak, uh, Hank Philippi yep. Ryan yes. now writes as well as she has her well, uh, people need TV to, show. If you don't know who she is, Hank Philippi Ryan is a uh, investigative journalist from uh, WHGH. W yeah, I think uh, NBC, the Boston affiliate. Yeah. yeah. WHGH, yeah. And, you know, renowned, so maybe you do know her. But we, I mean, I felt so blessed to be able to be, I mean, there were like it was small intimate. Group, intimate conversation with Hank Philippi Ryan. And she engaged everybody. But the exciting thing is um, from this, we will get autographed copies of her book. Uh, for those that let us know ASAP, <laughs> and we're starting, a, and mm -hmm. we're starting a, a book club with her book being one of the first books yeah. to be read. So Me if you want to, it's the um, we'll be meeting the Monday after Thanksgiving okay. at seven o'clock upstairs at Co. We already oh, have it reserved. Very good. Yep, very good. Um, we already have over a dozen women that want that don't have the book. I know we got right. it that yeah. night, but um, that already want the book. Um, Hank Philippi Ryan has actually said she'll come on this show yeah, and talk about so that's going to be something that we'll probably do sometime in December or January. Mm -hmm. But um, schedule, you know, yeah. right? And you know, th I think this is a easy read book, so it's right. fun. It will probably be something where we only meet like twice, and, and she actually may surprise us at one of the meetings. But you know, I first of all did not know that she was such a prolific writer. I thought we were maybe hearing about a first book. She's written nine award, and many of them are award winning. Word and, and, and you know, the, and I don't read a lot of fiction, but I'm reading this one. The, um, she's in the genre of the, uh, you know, uh, who's the it's writer of it's Mystic murder, River? It's, it's kind of murder mystery. Based in Boston. So it's Boston based, you right. know, uh, investigative. This particular group, she had an yeah. earlier series that's a little different, but she takes a theme right. and, and, and builds on themes that are actually germane to Boston, loosely, you know, oh, I thought ripped they, they from were the like, headlines, some uh, of them. Yeah, exactly, but to her so. whole, the whole, I thought it was, everything was in Boston, that's what's so cool. No, 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 I meant, I meant the, the, uh, the stories, some of them have some fact-based, Oh yeah, because you know, she's, you know, she's been doing you know, undercover work, sort of, as a, you know, as an investigative journalist. She's got, obviously, the background to know how it's done and has the contacts and, you know, all the back alley behind the scenes stuff in Boston. Cool. It was yeah. it was a really a lot of fun and you know we've the three of us have stayed in touch with her since and um, you know right now she's doing a book signing in Delray Beach and um, mm, nice. <laughs> n next week she's actually doing a book signing in Virginia at um, We had her Unibank thank you. We had her here in Hopkinton. At, Sorry. Well, this to me this is a bigger deal with the Virginia piece because my favorite author is Nora Roberts, who is also J.D. Robb, who is a murder oh, mystery yep, writer. Yep. So she has two aliases, and her oh. home base is out of Chesapeake. This is actually Nora Roberts' own bookstore, and she personally oh. invited wow. Hank wow. Philippi Ryan to sign her new book with her. Wow. And so this, you know, That's a big and, and Hank Philippi Ryan is like, she's like, this is like the god of murder mystery books <laughs> being yeah. like invited and stuff like that. Because when I told her how much of a fan I was of J.D. Robb books, a lot of her inspiration came from these because she did, those also have two main characters yes, that yes. follow through and have a storyline. And these two, too, you know, one's an investigative reporter, one's a cop. Right. My, the other one in this one is a, 
in the JD Robs are always a cop and a um, a huge financial guy. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so that well, was yeah, a fun. Exactly. That was a really fun evening, and it makes me, you know, I I need to get less serious and read read some fiction. I definitely would would start with her. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I only read fiction. I yeah. do I read both, both, but my problem is I'm an obsessive reader. So once I start, I like to read about. I don't put them down. So. You know, like Brad, my husband. He reads all night. If he gets in, and he reads oh. all the Lee Childs, the James Patterson. The, you know, yeah, I, I he's going to love her. Yeah. yeah, he's going to love her. So stuff and too. then um, that was what fun. after that? The ropes course. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> that was a blast. Frame it up, um, the ropes course. Well, was you had over a dozen people go. We had we had fifteen of us. Um, so this and, is a, a, yeah. an event at the Y, the, the Family Outdoor Center in Hopkinton, with their incredible ropes course and climbing. They do it for team building. They're in the woods. It's incredible. And this was our second time. This was this the second time. And be brave, adventure two. It, it's it's metaphoric for having us do things that we're not always comfortable doing, getting a little bit outside of our comfort zone, whether you work or, or you know, I always say, Whatever all you women do. are working, <laughs> women, some just bring home paychecks. <laughs> um, but getting out of your comfort zone, and this course is set up, we had three elements, and for some of us, uh, one of them did, you know, she's very good at it, and she did the element no hands. And it was like, wow. Mm -hmm. And for others, it was simply climbing up the tree because it was up really high and coming back down. Everybody pushed themselves at a, mm -hmm. at a level. Everybody engaged into a tree. They all said they mm -hmm. had fun. And it was, the why is so generous. They want to keep doing this for us. They want us mm -hmm. to experience this. We give a donation to them. Which all proceeds went right, right to the why. They thank the them y. so much. And we had how many people were you saying? 19? Or you were there? Yeah, 19. She was 15. 15. 15. But there were a lot that wanted that had conflicts. Right. And right, I think right. there were some that just missed it and didn't right. see it. So I mean, I think the other thing time. was that to note this is this was the second time this event had happened. Yeah. Right. And that, you know, the first time about a dozen people raised their hand, this time even more raised their hand. And only two overlaps, me and Kathleen. Right. And that. Um, Everybody else was new. Mm -hmm. You know, and the why keeps coming back, hey, let's do it again. Let's do it again. And well, stuff they, like yeah. that. And um, I mean, so, I mean, and this week, um, RHH actually sponsored a Y event that you went to. We were to. a bronze sponsor for the uh, annual charity event at the Metro West Y, and proud to do that. And, yeah. um, you know, it's a, one of their big fundraisers. Um, you know, the, Met, the, the Y, nationally, I mean, is more than wow. swim and gym. I mean, you, you're reminded of that when you um, engage with them, that the Y is a real community of, of people uh, coming together to ensure that people are healthy and happy in all different kinds of ways. You know, it spans the services from, you know, preschool to senior citizens. And, you know, the Y, uh, you know, has the best fitness equipment. I mean, they, they compete with any, you know, any gym out there yeah. in terms of the yeah. quality of, of uh, equipment that's there. Awesome, can't say enough. And so it's always fun to support I them. I mean, I think it was neat too. It's like um, Scott from the Y reached out to us yesterday yeah. that, you know, even though I don't need this service anymore, or, or any of the three of us, you know, it was a, a FYI that the you know the Y also has these programs that on school days off, like the, the, these vacation Upcoming. club programs. Right. And um, I mean, for a parent that my kid, the youngest, is 16, um, I don't, I'm not going to utilize it. But oh my God, it was a wake-up call. I'm like, oh yeah, there is two days off next week, right? And stuff like that. And then when I was telling a couple, people, like, oh yeah, I forgot that we have. A, this is the first year we also have election day off. Um, that Mary McLeod decided about this time last year that the schools will actually be closed, that not to have people coming through. Right, right. Um, you know, the local elections, you come through the back and everything else. But the um, so the schools are actually closed on election day, and then they were closed on Veterans Day. Right. So the Y is a resource for having for child yeah, care. And, then, yeah. and they That's had a like wonderful you know, one. Yeah. membership isn't that expensive, but they had a greatly reduced rate if you were dropping off your kid right. on these vacation days if you're a member, and if you weren't a member, it was like thirty bucks right. more. But and the Y exists so that any child, adult, senior that wants to be part of the Y community, to be a member, to um, partake in the facilities, you know, um, no one is turned down. Those of us who can become members and pay. 
But if, if you, you can't, can't afford, if you, you cannot, get a you talk to the Y, and they will make it work for you. Essentially, there's yeah. no reason why you don't. Exactly, to the y. but that's that's <laughs> the real passion for giving to making this wonderful resource accessible to any and everyone. Yeah, well, it was fun, and and Scott does an amazing job, and he is incredible in his encouragement. It was a really fun outing. And then a bunch of us met with you guys then after yeah, we came going. to the party. No, yeah. we yeah. <laughs> this, this, this year, we had done the ropes. Darling and I did the ropes right. last year. Off the bucket list, awesome. I'm not a heights person, but, you know, <laughs> got up there a bit. But that was fun. Then we, you know, quietly gathered. You guys are so cool. Not a smudge of dirt on you. Nothing. <laughs> out the woods climbing trees. And they could have been having a, you know, a ladies' lunch. Well, and we had hard hats on while we were there. So no we hair messed up. And, you know, all the, all the equipment, equipment to get on belay. So, so it was that was fun. fun. It was fun. So, so yeah, yeah. So and then Halloween. Halloween, and that was uh, we got no trick or treaters, none on Saddle Hill Road. It's one. windy. You got one. one? Mm. So, did you, was your house? Did you get a bunch? Yeah, we got probably a few dozen. Yeah, uh, I just didn't make it all the way down. Well, yeah, head. I mean, you guys are the last house on a dead at, at the end, so yeah. it's like it just doesn't exactly. happen. Exactly. <laughs> well, back you know in the good old days, they used to come and, and John always at my has full size candy bars, so he used to just deliver them. <laughs> yeah. I bought full size this sure. year. <laughs> Yeah, you he, got it. So he used to like after Halloween with this stuff. I'm like, I, I know the kids didn't make it all the way up. Here's the candy. Oh, Here's the candy. Not get rid of it. That's but nice. um, so it was fairly quiet and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's but always the, a fun thing. The schools had. Um, oh right, the high school and their annual senior dress up, right? And Those we'll throw a picture up of this. Um, oh. I know that um, we Mike and Courtney. There was a parody on the Real Housewives oh, and they stuff were like awesome. that. Yeah, a group of teen. Uh, you know high school seniors dressed up as their depiction of housewives and you know shout out to to the real group with the yeah the, the membership number and uh it was fun that it was, was that was cute well, but, yeah. and the center school does their harvest parade mm -hmm. yeah the kindergartners mm -hmm. What do they do? They parade around. They parade around the common. common. Oh, I didn't adorable, see. Yeah, I, I've caught that over the years, just randomly seeing them. You know, They're I so remember cute. when my kids. You know, and it was just like a thrill. For them. Oh, sure. Just a thrill. <laughs> um, and uh, then we have yeah. a lot coming up. So tonight at HCA, um, Steve Spector's doing. Um, First Friday open Steve mic. Specter of so Hot back, Acoustics. Back up. Eight, eight, we've mentioned it, but let's remind everybody: HCA on the first Friday of every month. Ah. When we had Barbara Kessler here, um, we talked about it. it was uh, the and it's only during the school year. Um, okay. The first Friday of the month is open mic. Uh, you can donate five, ten bucks toward the artist. They do pass the hat around, and tonight is Steve Spector from Hot Acoustics, so it should be a good night. I'm yeah, planning on great. going for mm -hmm. a while, at I least mean, the first yeah. set I think I'm going to go mm -hmm. in for. Um, but what a jewel for our town. Tomorrow, right. you know, right. you, and we've had Kelly Grill on the show, who is the executive director of um, the Hopkins in Cultural Arts you know, of HCA, to, yeah. and so, you know, she, she's got a pretty packed weekend, you know, because you, we, we would think, okay, you know, she, She's got this thing tonight. She's got the big gala tomorrow night where there's still a limited few amount of tickets left. So, um, but, so exclamation but roll point. back a little bit before okay. what that thing starts tomorrow night. Kelly Grill actually grew up in Hopkinton, and so this is a huge shout out to Kelly Grill. Um, Kelly Grill is getting inducted into the Hoppington High School Hall of Fame tomorrow night. Yay. She gra she graduated in 1983, okay. and she and she is being recognized along with people like Walter Brown and things like that who wow. like, you know, the Walter Brown Arena and, yeah. and everything and like Kelly that. Kelly so Grove, I don't know if you mentioned, is, is the executive director of the Hopkinton Cultural Arts Center for the Arts, you know, it had different I, names before. Hopkinton, that's what I'm saying, it's remember, Hopkinton Center for the Arts, Arts. HCA, executive director, Kelly Grill. And she, found, and she, and she founded that together with um, as an enter stage left with Mary Scarletta, yeah, and who also graduated from Hopkinton High School. It was a small little theater group, right? Right, For and you know, and where it's become now. Um, but you know, so she is literally going from an event tonight, changing early tomorrow night, hitting the high school, getting her award, and then going, you know, the same so, parking lot. So to yeah. slow it down, tonight is the open mic. Open mic, yes. And, and a real gem every first Friday during the school year. A great activity for everybody. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow night is the big... Their annual gala. Their annual gala. It's the second one. Left. Two second and, annual. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's going to be like dress in colorful costumes. We're all going, looking forward Wait, to costumes? that. Wait, costumes? Not costumes. I like finery. I'm like, I'm not, not costumes. Right. They want, 
the, the attire, elegant attire, attire. 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 attire, festival of lights. Yeah. Yeah. So they want people to dress bright, bright lights, kind of like you know show lights. But the um, oh. And then and the she gets, before done. that, she gets the award. So, so. The, And the food is being done by Peppers and Worcester, which is incredible. Um, I'm trying to remember what the band is. Oh, God, I can't this remember. This would be a good band. Dancing it, band? It's, it's, it's a dance band. band. Yeah. 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 Um, it's the same band they had last year. Um, they had hot acoustics last year, I thought. No. They had I forget who we had. It was, it was a whirlwind of fun. I've been in too many events. And then. what a beautiful new space of the, you know, it's not so much new, but it's it maybe new to many people. It's a year old, but it's, yeah. it's an incredible, you're talking about jewel, it absolutely is. Real jewel. Absolutely is. And, so, you know, I think, you, you know, the chamber now has utilized it. I know we had, you know, um, Scott Richardson was on the show um, last month or something. He used a lot, he used it for his 40th anniversary party. Right. And now RHH is going to actually utilize it. Um, we are going to reduce shopping for a cause. It'll be the uh, first the Sunday in December from 4 to 7. Right. And it's going to be at HCA this year, and they'll actually be one of the benefactors of it. That's yeah. awesome. No, we're excited. We just decided, um, because yes, we yeah. are changing <laughs> venues, um, so that was a big you know, decision mm -hmm. point for us, just because of um, wanting to take advantage of the uh, Center for the Arts and moving, moving the event there. It's been successful the past few years. People have asked for it back. Shopping for a cause. Proceeds will be going to a local uh, nonprofit, and that'll be announced Couple soon. Of yep. yep. And, and the, uh, you know, and it um, it will accumulate an entire weekend of events that first weekend in December going on town HCA, from right. um, the um, stroll, the holiday stroll, which HCA actually coordinates. Mm -hmm. um, there'll also be a shopping boutique on Friday night, which is crafters from HCA. Okay. So a lot of artists, artists, and, and, artists and, and, yeah. and crafters. Um, Saturday, all the Christmas trees are going out, and mm -hmm. we are actually sponsoring one of them. Yeah. And um, so <laughs> when you come on, art on the trail, so, I'll be it back yeah, to. So yeah. when, when you come there on that Sunday to shopping for a cause, and most of these vendors are extremely local. I mean, one of them is. Oh my God, she's now. This will be her third year. Her mother's already signed her up. Her third year, and she's a junior now at Hoppington High School, and she right. makes scarves. And but so these are popular the, vendors, so people come out and do some Christmas shopping at yeah, Shopping for I mean, a Cause, which is, you know, these are. And you know, you're shopping local, you're shopping privately owned for the most part. Right, right, absolutely. Okay. A lot of good things, scarves and beautiful um, jewelry and um, candles and lots of lots of cool things. Nancy Best, like photography, she, Photog did, yeah. she did calendars last year. Yeah, we had, a, yeah, it's fun. So that'll be good. More on that as, those, as uh, we approach. Yeah. yeah, so I'm tired already thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, and the, the days just keep spinning in lots of ways. So, you know, we're um, you know, blessed to be doing the show. Um, we are uh, actively engaged in our, in our other lives, you know, that keep us busy during the day from, you know, Hayes Event Management to uh, CFO Rivers, uh, Sarah, group. Charles Rivers CFO, right? Yep. Decision Insight continues to um, stay very active, uh, very uh, appreciative of the you know work that I get to do with some of the some, some wonderful organizations throughout New England. And one of the events that I'm working on now, um, I know we took part of it when, um, last year. But um, it's the Sportsman's Gala, which will mm -hmm. be on November 18th. And I know it's out of the way a lot for people in Hoppington. It takes place in Randolph. But there is an online auction going on, and we keep mm -hmm. adding to it. So if you go to Bidding for Good and look up Sportsman's uh, Tennis and Enrichment Center, there is a, uh, and there are some pretty cool items up there. There is a Kentucky Derby trip. There's a Hamilton experience that we were able yeah. to acquire. Um, and That's a phenomenal organization. It's been like around for many, many years. Yeah, um, this will be the 55th yeah. year. Wow. It's the largest. It's the oldest African American nonprofit tennis facility in the country. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, their their partnership with the Boston City Police has become nationally renowned, and now has branched off to a volley against violence in Brockton, one in um, Atlanta starting, and a top. Uh, WT touring pro named Sloane Stevens mm -hmm. is actually launching her own out of Compton, who is um, actually our touring pro for sportsman's right. tennis. But you know, it's just so inspiring. Um, and you know, your 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 company works with nonprofits as well. Well, yeah. I, I mean, and I sit on a bunch of boards. And actually, yeah. on November 9th, uh, so next Wednesday, um, Center for Women Enterprise. And I think I was going with you on that. Yeah, yeah. RHH mm -hmm. page. Um, has this wonderful, uh, it's its more an awareness event, it's not a fundraiser, right. and I have open seats if you want to come join me. Um, 
but it's an opportunity. Center for Women in Enterprise helps um, mostly women, but we have a few men that go through the program, and it helps women start businesses, and then as you have a business, helps you uh, grow and improve your business. Everything so they from, work yeah. with startups to... From concept to um, venture capital funding, right? Exactly. You, <laughs> you know, know, they have a, a program for what they call the missing middle, mm -hmm. helping women move their business from sub a million to over a million. Absolutely. And, and, uh, and I think like and all scholarship we've based, so if you need a scholarship, you get a scholarship. We've wandered around, like even like the um, poly arts together, and you've run into, you know, oh. someone who's a crafter who was, you know, a recipient of CWE, and you look at that, and that's, you know, a small <laughs> business, to something like iRobot that came out of CWE. It came yeah, out, exactly. it's everything. The spectrum is broad, and then you're yeah. involved oh. in so many nonprofits. That's an, absolutely excited to be working with an international organization. So a lot of my thought processes around South Africa these days, and that's exciting. Heading out to uh, do some work with them this afternoon. Yeah, you're but heading you know, to Johannesburg this afternoon. Uh, <laughs> just, just on the phone, <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, but yeah, yeah, it's fun. We're um, wow. Excited so. to be here. We appreciate all of you. We thank HPM for, oh. uh, for its you know, recognition thank of, you. and Heart. help and support. Have a great and weekend, thanks guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Jerry Goodman. And I'm Dr. John Mandeville. Age-related eye diseases such as cataracts, glaucoma, macular degeneration, and diabetic retinopathy affect nearly 37 million Americans. With an aging population and higher rates of conditions like diabetes, the number of visually impaired people is expected to increase substantially in the years ahead. While age may bring on vision disorders, many conditions are preventable, and everyone at any age should take steps to maintain good eye health. Here's what you can do. Get regular screenings to check for potential problems. Take care of your overall health, know your family history, and be alert to health and vision changes that could be signs of something serious. Wear eye protection when needed, at work, playing sports, or working at home with tools, including sunglasses to guard against damaging rays from the sun. For more information on eye health and protecting your vision, visit GetEyeSmart.org. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you.